How do I crosshatch a subject that's really irregular in shape, such as this bronze imperial eagle in Vienna? I've done a really nice line drawing, but I need to give it a sense of three dimensions of depth. How do I do that without all my lines ending up looking really messy? I really don't want to mess up my line drawing though. We probably all know this feeling. I can actually relax now because I've already done it. But what I want to do is to show you a sped up version of my actual cross hatching, but then to use this line drawing, which is in fact a print from a photo I took of my original before I put the hatch in on top to show you in simplified form my thinking and my hatching direction for a shape such as this. At the very end, I'll have three or four minutes of real-time hatching from a couple of different parts of the eagle if you're interested to see how it looked in real time. But it took me about 50 minutes. And if you'd like to have a go, then I'm posting an image of this line drawing on my channel community page. I'm also posting a copy of this reference photo and I'm also copying two other reference photos and I've exposed print of this one. And what it did was it let me see up under the wing and see the three dimensional form of the wing much more easily. And as well as this, I printed off a black and white version to give me a stronger sense of how the light and dark tonal values played out without the distraction of colour. So I'm going to post this line drawing and each of these three references onto my channel community page. So up next is sped up of watching me do the hatching. So maybe you want to go and grab a cup of tea before that starts. And then after that, I will show you a simplified outlining of the hatching directions and decisions and thoughts I took using this outline. So here's the drawing.
Well, that's how I did it. But let me show you in a little more simplified manner. I used a 0.2 fine liner pen. And I've talked about the importance of those five minutes practicing and getting a sense of what marks and lines and how they were going to look. And I did that for this as well. I actually printed off a smaller copy and I just spent a few minutes just checking what I was planning to do. So what I'm wanting to do with my hatch lines is to emphasize the form of the eagle, which will help project the sense of three dimensions. I also want to accentuate the key parts of the eagle, which in this case particularly is the head. And so I spent a fair bit of time looking carefully at this bronze neck, looking to see the various bulges, if you like, from this very foreshortened view of the eagle's neck. And basically, I used lines that would indicate the bulging. So just exaggerating slightly here, but you can see what I'm doing. But then we also need to work out when we change direction, how we do that, how we transition from one direction to another, because this is a bit abrupt and that would be a better way to do it. But I decided to do these, if you like, bulging parts, basically in lines that went this way, all the way up the neck and into the leading edge of the wing. But then after I got to here, I wanted to be getting a sense of the curvedness of the wing. And so I changed my direction. And the same thing was happening on this side, except there was just a little bit here before I change my direction. Now we also have to check where there is light and where we don't want hatching because we want the paper value to come through. And so again, in a simplified way, this is what I'm doing until I get to here. And then all of this section is in light. And the biggest challenge, which I knew from the start, was going to be the underside of this wing. Now, as you can see, by using an overexposed copy of my photo, I was able actually to get quite a lot of detail. And so what I did was I used this, firstly, in my hatching. So my first hatching lines, if you like, were emphasizing these feathers. So they were in this direction. And in some spots, there were some deeper shadows. And so I emphasized those as well. But basically, I did a lot of this. With the exception of these thin feathers that we're seeing more edge on, that I did more like that. And when I'd finished doing this, I then began also to do some hatching lines that were pretty much in this direction. And you can see here that now I'm not concerned about the form of any one feather. I'm actually hatching according to the form of the overall shape, the overall structure of the wing. But then as well as doing that, after a while, because I knew I had to get this very dark in here, but I did want to get a hint of the feathers coming through. So it felt like we were looking at the underside of a wing in shadow. And so after this, I then began to do curved lines in this direction to indicate not the shape of the wing in this downward plane, but the curve of the horizontal plane. And so I basically kept repeating these directions with my hatching and built up the sense of the shape. And of course, the very tiny bits of paper that show through are important for giving a sense of, of direction, of movement, and stopping this being just a big black blob. And you can see with this wing, I actually exaggerated the sense of light on this leading edge, just to give a sense of, of bouncing light, and also to create a little bit of contrast with this wing. But I think you can see with this wing how my direction is very much going this way. But over here, this is a more dominant direction and there are actually some angled 
hatching lines quite a lot of long ones crossing over the top. But we still see these horizontal lines coming through and we do get these almost white lines that appear. When we have something such as this leg protruding over the edge of the pedestal, again, what direction do we take our line work here? And I decided to go with fundamentally a horizontal direction. And it's partly that I wanted to get a sense of very different movement and of object to the underside of the wing. And so I'm basically doing my lines this way. In the edges, there are some longer vertical ones. And of course, a lot of very close together lines to get the very dark shadows in here that we want. Now the eagle's head is clearly very important. And so I studied this reference to see that we kind of get this, there's a shape that's kind of like that, that really is defined by the, by the tone, which in this case is by our hatching. And so I do those lines, but then we've also got the lines here and we want to get a sense of the, the sunlight on the edge of the beak. And then we also want to have some nice dark hatching, almost black colouring in, right up against that to highlight it. And so basically I was doing rounded cheek forms. Now, when we come to the underneath here, then the lines become horizontal more to reflect the horizontal underneath section of the bird's beak and throat. And so for this part, I basically keep my line direction this way. And that then is in contrast to the leg where my primary line direction becomes this way. And again, that helps create a sense of different structure of different form. I mean, I still do have some horizontal hatching lines because I need some cross hatching to, in effect, create darker values. But the more prominent direction is downwards. And you can see how that does help create a sense of separation that this is a different part of the body moving in a different way to this. And for similar reasons, with the scaled section of the eagle's legs, I again changed direction and went this way. Now, with the crown on top, I really didn't want to get too bogged down with it. I wanted the bird to have the stronger sense of reality. So I didn't actually create as much hatching three-dimensionality detail with it. But what I did do, I was very careful to follow the roundness follow the roundness of the crown. With this stone pedestal the eagle sits on, she didn't realise till I was starting to draw it really that, that this top stone represents what's meant to be a rough stone. And therefore, I did change the directions of my hatching to show that it wasn't a dress stone the way the ones underneath are. And the one thing I'm not happy about in my drawing is in the end, how I made these stones look. I think if I had my choice again, I would just leave them plain. So they really were just an outline of support for the eagle. And you can see here with this leg coming out from under the wing, the importance of really getting a nice gradation from darker to lighter. And that gives a sense of this slowly emerging out into light. But why not give it a go? You don't have to worry about messing up your drawing. You can use the line copy that I've put on my channel community page. So you can have a go as many times as you like. You can experiment, you can be bold, you've got nothing to lose, you can print off three or four copies and have them ready to start again. It's actually a good way to learn something such as this. Do your lines in various directions and then compare the results and see which one you think works best for your drawing style and for the overall effect of the drawing that you want. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. But look, whatever you draw and however you draw it, make sure you have fun. And coming up now, there's a few minutes of real-time hatching. See you next time. Bye.